So you've probably heard about mnemonics at some point in your life. If you haven't, they're basically mental devices that allow you to access hard to remember information in a sort of roundabout way. Take the acronym Roy G. Biv, for example. This silly sounding name allows us to easily remember the order of the colors in the visible light spectrum. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Our brains aren't really wired in a way that makes remembering the order of arbitrary words easy, but they do easily latch onto silly sounding names. So essentially, this acronym provides a pathway to a specific piece of information. Information that does exist in your brain, even if it's hard to access directly. But building these sorts of mental pathways isn't just useful for accessing information that's already up in your head. You can also build them to easily access information that you don't know. And in doing so, you can greatly expand your brain's capabilities. Someone who understood this concept exceptionally well was Henry Ford. I have a row of electric push buttons on my desk, he once said, and by pushing the right button, I can summon to my aid men who can answer any question I desire concerning the business to which I am devoting most of my efforts. In other words, Ford didn't know all the information that he needed to run his business himself, but he did know how to quickly get any answer to any question that he needed. Now, today, there are entire businesses that provide the access to experts like the ones that Ford relied upon back in his day. They're called expert networks, and I actually learned all about them back in my MIS program in college. Other businesses, like hedge funds especially, often pay huge sums of money for yearly subscriptions to these types of networks. But of course, we have another tool at our fingertips, which is called Google. And what's more, it's free. So with such a useful tool at our fingertips, why even make a video about this? Well, here's the thing. Google is incredibly useful, yes, but it does have some limitations. The main one being that it's a search engine, which means that it can only return results based on the terms that you feed it. And sometimes you don't really know what you're looking for well enough to give it the accurate terms. But there's another problem as well. And it's the one that I wanna focus on in this video. It's the problem of reaccess. How many times have you stumbled across a really useful article or video only to be unable to find it again later. It's just like putting new information up in your brain. If you can't access it again when you need it, then what good is it? Fortunately, Google is not the only tool out there. So today, what I want to do is share some of the other tools and methods that I use to easily reaccess information. Think of them as modern day breadcrumbs to follow, except that these breadcrumbs don't get eaten by birds, so you don't get eaten alive by a witch. And really at the end of the day, isn't that what my entire channel is all about? So since we are on YouTube, the first one that I'm gonna mention is YouTube playlists. If you go over to my channel and you go to the playlist tab, you're gonna see many publicly available playlists that I've made of my own videos, but hidden underneath the surface, there are also dozens of unlisted playlists that I make for basically any topic that I'm interested in. And with these playlists, I'm able to easily save anything that I wanna access later on. So whatever I'm interested in, be it rock climbing or guitar pedals and signal chains or making better videos, I will make a playlist for that topic and then I'll save stuff to it as I come across it. Now, that feature is useful for anything on YouTube, but what about the rest of the internet? Well, for that, there is Pocket. And Pocket is basically a browser extension and also a set of mobile apps that allows you to save any web page you want for later reading. And one of the nice things about Pocket is that it's very similar to the reader mode on the iPhone. It actually strips out a lot of the extraneous elements of the website that you're on and just gives you a nice article view, which is very distraction free. Additionally, on their mobile apps, Pocket gives you the option of saving articles for offline access. So anytime I have a flight, I often go and download a lot of the articles that I've saved for later reading so I can access them while I'm on the plane. Now, I know several people who actually delete articles out of their Pocket once they're done reading them, but that isn't the way that I use it. Essentially, for me, Pocket is a way of saving anything I come across on the internet, whether I've read it already or whether I want to access it in the future. It's basically my main way of laying out these breadcrumbs, and I don't worry about keeping things organized, I don't use the tagging feature very often, I don't delete things, I just make very liberal use of that save the pocket button in my Chrome browser, and that way I know if I find something useful, I'm going to be able to find it again, even if I forget the search terms that might bring it to me in a Google search. Now, there is one place in particular on the internet besides YouTube where I don't tend to use Pocket to save things, and that is Reddit. I will often save Reddit comments directly to my Reddit account. Over the past couple of years, I have found that Reddit is often a better source of information for certain purposes than blogs or videos, and this is true for a couple of different reasons. First and foremost, Reddit, like many other social media sites, has a very low barrier of entry to post. People don't need to buy a camera like they do on YouTube, people don't need to learn how to set up a blog, they just need to make an account and they can write to their heart's content. And because of this, you often get a larger and much more diverse group of people sharing their knowledge. Plus, you usually also get multiple answers in each thread. And these are coming from multiple 
different voices. And because it has a conversation style setup, Reddit encourages discussion, encourages debate, and I often find the best answers several levels deep nested beneath the original comment. So sometimes this debate is really, really useful. Now, I know that I could easily save Reddit pages to pocket just like any other article, but usually I'm interested in saving a specific comment rather than the entire thread that it's from. And yes, I could click the permalink button and save that in pocket, but usually saving things to my Reddit account makes things easier because if I'm looking for something in the future, I usually at least know whether it was from Reddit comment or from a blog post. And if it was from a Reddit comment, I know that I can start from my profile instead of digging through pocket. All right, so we talked about YouTube playlists, Pocket, and Reddit. The next one I wanna talk about is screenshots. I take a lot of screenshots, especially when I'm watching YouTube videos. Saving an entire video to one of my playlists can be very useful, but sometimes I just want one frame for later reference. For example, I was recently watching a video about how to set up a specific order of guitar pedals, and they had this diagram of the signal chain in the video. So I screenshotted that in case I need to reference it later on. Now, basically every computer operating system out there has a built-in screen screenshot program. And I am here to tell you that it is not good enough and that you can do better. So the program that I personally use is called GreenShot. It's open source and free on Windows and incredibly full featured. And then it also exists on the Mac, but it costs about two bucks and doesn't have quite as many features. Though that being said, I still use it just because I like to use the same programs on each operating system if I can. The main thing that I like about GreenShot is that it allows me to set up multiple destinations for my screenshots. For example, I have mine set up to not only save each screenshot to a specific folder that's in my Google Drive, so I can access it from anywhere, but it also saves screenshots to my clipboard, so I can easily paste them into Photoshop if I need them for a video, or I can paste them into Notion or Evernote for note-taking purposes. And in addition to that feature, I also like that it allows me to set up different shortcuts for taking a screenshot of the entire screen, as well as also drawing a box around a specific region that I want to capture. Now, GreenShot is by no means the only screenshot program out there. So if you're looking for an alternative, there is ShareX on Windows, Skitch for Mac, and then Monosnap for both platforms. And that just leaves us with one more method that I want to talk about, which is trusty old notebooks and note taking. So in addition to taking notes on individual books, I'll often create specific notes in Evernote on things I'm trying to learn as well. And if it's a current interest, I usually bookmark those notes and add them to my shortcuts bar. A few examples include my Japanese notes, my After Effects notes, which have different scripts that I use occasionally and different shortcuts that I like to reference and can't always remember off the top of my head, and my notes for my live setup, which I'm trying to build right now, which has a lot of very complicated gear that has to go in a specific order. And aside from just typing notes, I also make extensive use of the camera feature in Evernote as well. I've got like a specific configuration of things or anything where just a visual reference would make much more sense than typing things out for a long period of time. I'll take a picture of it, I'll shove it into Evernote and that way I can easily access it just as I can with text. Now, the one odd thing about my Evernote setup is that I don't tend to use the web clipper function, which is essentially this browser extension that you can use to save articles and basically anything you want to your Evernote just like you can with Pocket. And I know my friend Martin uses that all the time, especially for things like recipes, but I tend to keep articles and things like that in pocket and things that I kind of create myself in Evernote, but you kind of have to use what works for you. Now, one last way that I've made sure that I can easily reaccess information is by building a library or rather several libraries. I have a physical one sitting on the bookshelf behind me, a digital one in my Kindle app, and another one made up of audiobooks. Now, you might think that it'd be hard to reaccess specific information in an audiobook that's hours long, but that's not a problem if you're listening through Audible, since their app actually lets you set specific bookmarks at timestamps and even add notes to them. Audible is also simply the best place to get audiobooks, ranging from the bestsellers to more obscure titles on botany and music theory. I use Audible almost every single day, especially now that it's warm and I can bike more often. And if you'd like to give it a try as well, you can go over to audible.com slash Thomas or text Thomas to 500, 500 on your phone to get a 30 day free trial. That trial also comes with a free audiobook download of your choice. And this month I'm gonna recommend Bill Bryson's excellent A Short History of Nearly Everything. This is one of my favorite nonfiction books of all time. And even though it's not on my list of essential books on my website, since it doesn't deal with productivity or academics, I do think that everyone should read it. It is a fantastic introduction to basically all fields of science. Now, of course, you could go and get any other audiobook that you want. And once you're a member, you're gonna get one new credit every single month for another audiobook, plus access to two Audible originals every single month that you cannot get anywhere else, and a library of audio workout and meditation programs to boot. So once again, to get a free 30-day trial of Audible service, along with a free audiobook download of your choice and two free Audible originals, go over to audible.com slash Thomas or text Thomas to 500, 
500 on your phone. Big thanks as always to Audible for sponsoring this video and being a supporter of my channel. And thank you as always for watching as well. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and also get subscribed right there so you don't miss new videos when they come out. And also click right there to get a free copy of my book on how to earn better grades if you haven't done so already. Last but not least, you can check out one more video on this channel by clicking right over here or check out our latest podcast episode right over here. And if you haven't subscribed to that podcast channel, you should probably do that as well. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.